So hey there fellow YouTubers, Frank Bush here again. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of a solar generator. So the good people over at All Powers decided that they were going to send me one of their 100 watt um, solar panels here and uh, their S300 solar generator, and this is just part of the kit to go with it, to do a video review and uh, give my honest take on kind of how I thought it worked and and its performance and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of content, stay tuned. Okay, so my thinking as we walk through this video is I'll go through the different components and then we'll kind of show their different performance on all the different aspects of, you know, their individual bits, yeah? But either way, this is the solar panel here. This is the solar generator here. Give you a little bit of a close-up of that. And then this here is just a charging block for the solar generator so you can plug it into ac power like uh you know plug it into the wall kind of thing right so i'll start with the solar generator and we'll walk through just putting a charge into it and we'll talk about kind of how it arrived to give you an idea when this stuff first arrived in the mail i didn't bother doing unboxing because to me that's not the most exciting in the world but uh, the quality of the shipping it came in was really fantastic you know it was uh well protected with foam insulation all that the packaging was really professional it was really you know high quality high quality product in that regard and uh like i say we'll shift now what I'll do is I'll plug this uh, generator into the wall first off with the uh, charge unit that's provided. And I'll show you the performance of that kind of stuff. Then we'll walk across the different uh, inputs and outputs and that kind of stuff on the solar generator. And we'll actually plug in devices and see how it performs. Because really I want to do an honest review of this stuff. So I know the kinds of stuff that I'd like to do with this out in the field. And we're going to plug some of that stuff in here and see if it sinks or floats, if you will. And uh, so that'll be definitely a key part of this video. So the first part will be just plugging it in, showing you the power input off the walls. And then we'll go Go through further details on that and uh, i'll talk about the solar panel and we'll bring that out into the field and we'll show it uh, you know using the sun and all that kind of stuff to charge it up to show how effective the solar panels are and all of that kind of bits so let me just shift camera angles and we'll first start by walking through you know plugging this into the wall like you would at home yeah okay so i just shifted into my kitchen so i can plug into the wall yeah but uh so i'll just show you the little pouch that they send for the charging block to go into it's nice quality and all that kind of stuff looks like uh some sort of nylon but it's fairly heavy gauge and it's got like a plastic on the inside i believe that's probably just to help make it more water resistant but here's the little charging block and now let's see if i can get this on camera and bring it in for the tech people that like see all the specs and that kind of stuff but it's in essence it's a 60 watt charging block that uh, does output power at 20 volts at 3 amps so i'm just going to turn around and plug this into the wall now and it's got a little barrel connector onto it hopefully you can see that on camera okay and now on the side of the generator just right here I can just plug straight into there. So, you know, simple, just like you'd have anything else in your home, that kind of stuff. And now the little panel lights up here and I'll probably have to come in and do a close up. I'll shift camera angles and come in and do a close up on this. So it's got some interesting features in the display. Let's see if I can kind of justifiably, it's just a weird angle. So here it tells me hours and minutes of expected battery left, if you will. And it's got a little percentage underneath the battery tells me, you know, the charge of the battery. And then this shows me how many watts are going in. And what I found, I've kind of used this for about a week or two now and just kind of played with it to see the capacity of it and stuff. Now, this is the S300 and it's rated at 288 watts. I found that when this first arrived, it arrived with no power in it at all. And from what I've seen from other review videos, that's kind of standard that they ship these things with no power in them, which is unusual to me, but either way, that's how it arrived. And charging it from dead to full, I was able to put about 220 watts worth of power into it. Um, you know, for the length of time at the charge rate and that kind of stuff. So even though it's rated at 288, 
Um, realistically, I found this has had closer to about 200 watts worth of power usage that comes out of it. To give you an idea, there's losses when it comes to the DC and the inverters for the AC and all that kind of stuff. And there'll be, you know, power consumption when it comes to these screens and all that, you know. But uh, that aside, either way, it still holds, you know, roughly, I would say about 200 watts worth of power with the unit I got. You know, it all depends on the battery that's sitting in there and stuff. I don't know how long this was kind of sitting on the factory floor before they shifted to me on empty but it's normally not good for uh, lithium batteries to sit with no charge in them for extended lengths of time i know that so hopefully there wasn't too much battery degradation just from it being kind of in the warehouse if you will but you know all in all it still has a very usable amount of power and as you can see i'm charging here at 53 watts now this will charge at that rate for the better part of the charge cycle and when we get close to 100 percent um it'll start to slow down a little bit you know down to 15 20 watts that kind of thing but generally speaking um you know if this was uh full capacity and could handle 288 watts and that you'd be expecting closer to a, a six hour charge time for me i got about four and a half hour charge time out of it you know from dead to full and i've cycled it a few times from what i understand um the battery should kind of improve a little bit as we move through time that they've got to kind of cycle a few times to get their juices flowing if you will to keep it you know non-technical but uh one way or the other this still serves good purpose in that regard even though i didn't reach the power performance that they say that this device produces but uh i'll shift now and we'll start to plug in some devices i'll talk about kind of what you can do on the front here and then we'll start to plug in some devices and see what the draw amounts are for the output power that we're getting off these they've got spec sheets and i can go read those off and all that kind of stuff but to me it's like yeah just plug in devices and see how it performs in the real world <laughs> no, there's no sense in reading a spec sheet. It's going to tell you it's going to do one thing when, when you go to use it in practical use and all of a sudden it's doing another, right? So either way, I'll walk through the buttons and some of the options that we get on these. Um, and uh, then we'll go off and start plugging in devices, yeah? Okay, so on the front of the uh, device, we've got three buttons here. Now, the one on the left, that one's going to be to enable Bluetooth. That's one of the cool features of this solar generator that I do like. And uh, we'll go through each one of them, yeah? Now the DC button is here. If I just tap that, it'll light up and I can start using the DC, like plugging in USB and the cigarette lighter adapter and that kind of stuff, yeah? And now when it comes to the AC, uh, you gotta press and hold it for a second. And when you hear the beep, it lights up and now I'm able to plug in like I would normal AC devices and that kind of stuff, yeah? But uh, we'll go through that kind of in a little bit in the video. So I'll just turn those both off. But I'll kick back over to this Bluetooth here because it's kind of cool. So if I press this button and hold it for a second, we get that beep and it kicks on. Now on my phone, I've got the app downloaded and installed on my phone. And I can turn around and just detect the Bluetooth device, which is the solar generator. And now I can start to control my solar generator. I'll show it on my screen here. Hopefully you're catching this, all right? It shows, you know, a picture of the battery here with 50% time remaining. And, you know, 67 hours, 42 minutes, two days, 19 hours. Shows a little bar, shows, you know, where the battery's at and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool in that regard. And then it also shows input and output. So right now I can see on the main display, I've got 54 watts going in and I'm seeing that here. And then the output, because we're not running anything, is sitting at zero. But what you can do is you can turn on the AC, the DC, and the lights. I've got two lights that sit on the front here. I can turn them on manually and you can see they're really bright. They're one of the good selling features for using this out in the field and that where I can have kind of a, a good lighting system that I can use inside walled tents and that kind of stuff. So it's really good in that regard. I really like the lights that are on there. They're quite powerful. Then it doesn't have things like uh, other solar generators do with all the emergency flashing and all that. It's simply just a light. You know, it does the purpose that I need it to do. But on my device, uh, on my cell phone here, I can turn around and 
activate both those lights now I can do that right from my phone as well so you know if I've got this sitting across the the area of the wall tent you know it's sitting over one side of the wall tent and I'm cozied up in a sleeping bag on the other it's easy enough for me to start and stop the lights and all that kind of stuff it's the same with the DC I can turn that on it lights up I can turn around a light on the AC it lights up then triggers everything in and you'll see a little signal here showing that the AC is running and it uh, will tell me you know there's a shift now because I've got the AC running the inverter inside this there's a, a 300 watt inverter I do believe it is running these AC outlets here so you know that's going to consume some power and draw but uh, I'll just turn those all off for right now but it's good in that regard if you can be you know at bluetooth distance away from the device and control it with your phone so i think that's kind of handy you know when you're out in the field and that kind of stuff if i don't want to you know go over to the other side i can just you know flick on lights and flick off charging devices and that kind of stuff so it's really good in that regard and i like the app it's really simple there's not a huge amount to it you know but it does give me a good idea of what's happening with the device yeah so i'll stop talking about that and we'll go off and start plugging in some usb devices and we'll see the output performance because like i say we can see input and output so i'll unplug it from the wall we'll plug in some usb and start testing that stuff first and see what kind of amperage draws we're getting off those uh, five volt outputs and uh there's uh three usb c's here i'll just stop this for a second turn the device kind of show you where where we're heading in the review so there's a usb-c here and then we've got three other normal usb-c or usbs out here so we'll plug in some devices into that and then we'll look at the screen and it'll show us you know how many watts we're drawing now i know generally speaking these are five volt out and uh you know we should see five watts if it's drawn at one amp or closer to 10 watts if it's drawn at two and that kind of stuff so it's really elementary but uh you know generally speaking you know uh, if we see it coming off at five watts we know it's kind of a slower charge and if we see if it's coming off at 10 15 18 you know that kind of stuff those are normally the rapid charging you know when you're plugging in device like tablets and stuff you want to see it up closer at uh two two and a half um amps getting drawn so you want to see you know 10 to 15 watts being drawn out and that way you know you're fast charging your device it just takes less time yeah but we'll go through these different outputs now as the next scenes in the video okay so what i've done just to save a bit of time on the side here i just plugged in a bunch into the standard usb sockets that are here so there's three outputs there so i just plugged cables into all three and what i'm going to do now is just i'm going to unplug this um charger just so we don't see any watts going in and that kind of stuff i'll wait till it all zeroes out it normally has a little bit of a delay in this to tell you the in and the out of the power so if you plug something in and it's starting to throw charge you'll see it about 10 15 seconds as it kind of ramps up you'll see it 10 15 seconds later displaying out what it would be yeah but uh in order to charge any of the stuff off the normal usb what i found is yeah you got to go and press your dc button here and kick that on and it's just a quick press of the button you don't have to hold it down or anything i'll just grab one of my cables then i'll plug that into my tablet which is normally a higher draw device if you will and hopefully you can see it started to take the charge hopefully you got the bing on that and i can see i'm only taking one amp and i know that that's probably because my tablet is almost fully charged yeah but i want to plug in multiple devices to make sure that i can kind of charge everything at the same time as i go and yeah i can see it's already wanting to go between four and five so it's slowing down because it's getting close to full but i'll plug in my cell phone as well now and i can see normally i would see a fast charge here if it was a fast charge but uh it seems to be just a regular speed but either way i'm up to about 14 watts now so i know this is pulling about two amps so it's you know regular charge speeds i'm not seeing the rapid charge or anything but nor did i expect to given that i was plugging into the standard usb outputs and then i'll just plug in this is just another little battery stack that i have here that's i use out in the field i'll plug that in and i can see that's taking a charge as well here and hopefully the camera's getting that all right yeah yeah i'm still in camera okay good and i can see that it's pushed up to 17 or so now i know like i say i know my tablet was almost full so 
yeah, it's at 98%, so it's not going to draw a lot. But it's good to see. Like, I can plug in a tablet, I can plug in my phone, I can charge up a secondary battery device that if I, you know, want to have that as well. It's all doable in that regard. And right now I'm using 16 watts, you know. So, uh, on average, we're taking about 1 amp per each device. But I know, just from plugging it in earlier, we know that the cell phone has taken a larger proportion of that because it actually needs a more of a charge than anything else. But uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of the uh, USB performance when it comes to the normal USB. Now I'll talk about the USB-C out here, the power distribution um, that comes off here. Normally you should be able to get higher power performance as an output from here. So I'll switch up to USB-C cables and we'll plug into that one and we'll see how much of a draw we're getting here. And first off, I'll try to do that on this battery because I can see it's about half full and see if it affects things and we can draw a larger draw. And then I'll check on my cell phone to see if I'm drawing uh, uh, two amps or if I've gone into the fast charging. And I can turn all of these off just by pressing this everything shuts down and stops charging. The screens automatically light up when that happens, but needless to say, that you can shut everything down in an instant. So if you're charging devices, like I say, and then you're running on your cell phone and you wanna to go to that mobile app, I kind of wish that it had persistence. It does when it's when you shut it down, but if you shut down this app entirely, it'll forget the device and you gotta reconnect. It's not a major thing, but it's something you'd have to do, yeah? But I can easily, kick on and off the charging here too. I should be able to. Kick on the device. So I can see though, the Bluetooth isn't causing that DC to kick on and I'm not sure why. So I'm just gonna unplug everything for a second here when it comes to these devices and see What's going on here? Let me just shut down that app altogether. And these are things I want to find out before I take this out into the field, right? Where are the bugs at? What's the limitations of the device? Oh, because I didn't have my Bluetooth on. I had turned off the Bluetooth. Just being an idiot. Sorry. My bad. So you got to remember to have your Bluetooth on. I'll plug all that stuff back in while the DC is off. But these are all things I want to intimately know before I go relying on this when I'm out in the backcountry in any way, shape, or form, right? I want to know what the limitations are, what the restrictions are, all that stuff. So needless to say, the DC isn't on now. None of these devices are taking a charge. I'll just uh, re-detect that device now that i am got the wherewithal to have the Bluetooth on again. I'm connecting to it again. And now I'll kick back on my DC. Yeah, and everything works fine. Yeah, it was just me being an idiot. And I can see on here, it says 16, 17 watts. I'm seeing 18 watts here. So, you know, I know that I'm pulling good charge into these devices and that kind of stuff. So it's good, at least I know that it's not the app that had the problem, it was me. <laughs> but uh, like I say, I'll switch over now and I'll test this USB-C output because this is supposed to be um, higher output that comes off here. So you can rapid charge and, and send larger amounts of uh, wattage down the line, if you will. So I'll just shut down the app and uh, unplug the devices. And now we'll switch over, I'll go grab another cable and we'll test that aspect of things, yeah? Okay, so now I've gone and grabbed my other USB-C to USB-C cable, you know, hopefully the camera's getting that all right. And I'm just going to plug into that now. And I'm going to test this now to see if it'll put out power with the DC on or not. I know the USB, the regular ones, don't. You have to have that DC button on, but I'll just plug in a device. What do you know? So I don't have to, through the USB-C, I don't have to even have that DC on or off. And now I can see I'm only taking five watts here. So I'm drawing roughly one amp or so that this device is drawing. So I'm not getting that rapid charge that I was expecting to get. I'll plug that in again. And when I look at 
oh yeah i got fast charging right here so hopefully you can see that there fast charging charging 89 so it is working on a fast charging setting which is good in that regard of and i'll just swap it out and i'll plug in here and see if that draws more because i know this battery is pretty empty but i can see with this battery i'm taking about two amps now so it's doing the fast charging and throwing it in so i can accelerate the charging cycles you know if i've got larger devices like tablets or like battery banks and that kind of stuff that i want to charge from this unit plugging in the USB C to USB C, going that way well you know cut your time in half you know you're going to draw on this battery harder but one way or the other you're going to be charging your devices at a far more rapid rate in that regard so but it is interesting that i didn't need to press on this dc on button here i just press it on now and we'll see if that makes a difference now. We'll unplug this and plug it back in and see if that makes any difference in the power draw that I'm throwing into this device. I doubt it will, but you now we'll take a peek and see, right? Yeah, so within reason, it's only jumped up to 7 watts now, so it's a tiny bit slower even. But uh, like I say, I don't think that cycling the DC power really matters on that power distribution output there. It just doesn't seem to have any impact. Uh, right now I'm taking about 1.3 amps or so input into this. So, you know, 7 watts if you will, right? So I had 5 volts and that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, so that kind of covers the USB side of things so it's good when i'm out in the field i can charge multiple devices and i know my larger devices i can plug into the USB C if i want to draw that higher power and then we'll trigger the fast charging and stuff let's go back to that phone and stuff again just confirm that that wasn't just a lucky fluke if you will yeah i'm seeing the fast charging again so that's a good sign right of one way or the other i know that it will rapid charge off of this USB C in so that's good now the next thing we'll go across is we've got this cigarette lighter plug-in if you've watched previous videos of mine you'll know that i've got lots of 12 volt cigarette lighter devices that i want to use out in the field i'm hoping that this device will be a really lightweight compact you know this thing weighs only about seven and a half eight pounds it's super light so i kind of like it in that regard but uh let's plug in some of the typical devices that i would use for 12 volt and see if i'm able to successfully run that on this side yeah so let me go switch camera angles let me go grab those devices bring them back we'll plug them in and see how it works Okay, so at this point in time, I thought I'd just stop and show what the specs say on the box. So I'll leave that up there for a second. Now it shows that when it comes to these USBs, we should be seeing 3 amps coming off of each one of those. We didn't see that. We saw closer to 1 or 2. And with the, uh, the PD, that um, it says it's capable of going up to 60 watts. Now we didn't, or uh, 100 watt output. Now I didn't see anywhere near that when it came to charging that battery stack. But with the 12 volt cigarette lighter, it says on the box that it runs at 10 volts uh, at, uh, or 12 volts at 10 amps. So when I read the instruction manual, I saw it say five amps here. So there were some discrepancies there, but like I say now, we're gonna test that out because I got lots of 12 volt little devices that I use and if you watch previous videos you have seen that I use these things often now what I have here is a little 75 watt inverter that can plug into a, a cigarette lighter here as you can see it's a simple little device gives me a USB and the AC out and that's rated for 75 watts I've got a little immersion heater plugs into the cigarette lighter um, I use that to just kind of make off a quick coffee and that kind of stuff and then I've got this cooking pot and that's 12 volt cigarette lighter as well so these devices if the specs on the outside of the box are all right these devices should within reason all work and if it's more the specs that are in the manual itself that say that the output is only five amps the only one that should work in this scenario is this one so let's put that to the test now yeah so the thinking really is i make sure my dc's turned back on here and the first thing I'm going to do is plug in this pot, because the pot, I believe, draws the most amount. I'm not 100% on that, but that's my suspicion. And it should be 10 to 11 amps, so it should push this thing right up to its maximum threshold, if you will. But let's plug that in. 
I can see it jumped up to 60, 112, 125. It shut off. So I'm not able to plug in this. I'll just unplug this for a second. And it's good that this shut off though. It lets me know that the overcurrent protection in this solar generator is working. That I'm not going to fry out the circuits because this is drawing too much power for this to be able to handle. But it is concerning in the regards of they claim that you can run 10 amps through this. It should be able to surge into 125 130 140 watts worth of power um for at least uh, you know 30 seconds or something before it just shuts off like it did so one way or the other i know that i'm not able to use this device to run my cooking pot which is unfortunate because it would have been a nice compact option in that regard so it all resets itself there's nothing i have to do i'll just turn my dc back on again and like I say, the over current protection worked, so it's good in that regard. Uh, now I'll plug in this immersion heater and we'll see what that has to say for itself. So I'm up to 60, 127, 148, it popped. So I'm not able to run this immersion heater. It did get a little warm, like it's hot there, but wasn't able to run this either. So I'm not able to run the higher end, you know, 12 volt devices like this which to me would be a, a critical for critical for being able to cook food and stuff out in the field so unfortunately it looks like this little generator is running more at the five amp threshold as stated in the uh, manual than it is on the 10 amp threshold that's stated on the back of the box so you know i'm assuming that if i had a more powerful version of the solar generator i'd be able to do that without issue and uh you know maybe all powers will send me one in the future we'll see but i'll turn around and plug in this little device now little 75 watt inverter and you know potentially i'm not going to see anything immediately because i don't have any load on there but potentially it gives me a third way out where i can plug in some additional small scale ac things like um you know lights and that kind of stuff i'm talking more like lamps like you'd have in a in a living room and that kind of stuff you know you're not going to be able to plug in high-end stuff but i can plug in another ac and i could plug in another usb-c here and i'll just go grab a cable and plug in the usb-c to see that that power is all flowing through as expected I'll grab my phone again because it was the one that needed the most amount of power. Sorry for just kind of wandering off camera here, but bear with me. Like I say, these are all the tests I want to do before I go taking this out in the field at all, right? So I'm taking a charge going through that little inverter and that's fine. But now on here, let's see here. Yeah, I'm taking my charge. And it says I'm only taking one watt, but generally speaking, this will put out a little bit more than that. So I don't know what to say about that. Other than the fact of, yes, I am successfully charging, you know, so I could have four USBs going at the same time. And it does open up the option of having three AC outs. But like I say, this is more for plugging in smaller devices, yeah? And, and we'll I'll talk about that as we move into the next scenes. But unfortunately for the cigarette lighter, it seems to have a 5 amp threshold. So it's not enough to run the more powerful stuff that I really wanted to run off this device. Um, but it still will run things and I'll still be able to have good use for this out in the field. I just have to limit it to non-cooking applications, if you will. So I'll shift cameras here and we'll start to move on to the AC portion as well. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in detail. Oh, and there's one other dc base feature that i should talk about too so now on the top of this device they have this wireless pad and i've got my dc is on here so the theory is that you should be able to set your cell phone down and it'll just wirelessly charge and now i've played this place this cell phone down on pads in the past and i've tried on this device to place this phone i've taken the casing off this phone i've tried with um, iphones to charge them i couldn't get any of the um, cell phones or my tablet or anything 
to take a charge off this wireless. So I don't know if there's just an issue with this one specifically, but I've seen videos and other reviews where other people are having similar concerns about this wireless mechanism. To me, it's not a game stopper though, in the regards of, I don't normally use the wireless. I see them as inefficient. It's better off to plug into the USB-C and just run things off that way. But I tried multiple times to charge multiple different devices and wasn't successful with any of them. So if you're looking at getting the solar generator and having this wireless little component sitting on the top as being one of your key thoughts of why you would want to get this, um, I wouldn't recommend it in that regard. But, you know, like I say, the USBs on the side, you still have three of them plus the USB-C that you can plug into. And honestly, it's more efficient to plug into those devices than it is to go through the wireless charging anyways. It uh, uses less of the battery to charge up your devices to the equivalent amount. So that'll be it for the DC stuff. One other little side comment, these handles are on fairly firm. There's a padding underneath here and that really locks into place. I like that, some people don't, but be aware that if you're buying this device, that it is difficult to kind of pop that handle up. It's easy enough for it to move and everything, and it feels comfortable when you're, you know, just shift you up a bit, feels comfortable when you're picking up and moving it and that kind of stuff. But uh, one way or the other, it is significantly, you know, takes a significant amount of force to kind of set that back flat or to pop it back up again. It's not easy to kind of do in that regard. But uh, like I say, I'll stop now. We'll shift over and we'll have a discussion about the AC stuff. I don't normally run a lot of AC stuff when I'm out in the field, but we'll talk about what the spec manual says. And then we'll talk about the battery capacity versus the inverter and all that kind of stuff, you know, and uh, then I'll shift on to the solar panels and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a couple of AC devices that potentially I would be using in an emergency situation, that kind of stuff. Now this is just a little hot plate. I know this is like a thousand watt unit. This isn't going to work. It'll just overcurrent, but let's get the AC going. I want to check the overcurrent protection and that kind of stuff, yeah? So I'll just plug into the AC here. Immediately I shut down. Just drew too much amps. That's good though. Let's me know that the overcurrent protection is happening, yeah? So one way or the other, you're not going to be able to run something to the level of, you know, like a hot plate or that, you know, this kind of level of functionality. You're just not going to be able to perform that kind of power performance, which is fine. I'll just set that to the side. That was expected. I just wanted to trigger the overcurrent protection, which I did, and it turns off the AC. So I'll just kick the AC back on again. And now, I'll plug in a little space heater because this is something else that you might want to use. Now this device is rated for 300 watts with a surge of 500 watts on the box. So we'll just plug that in and see how it goes, yeah? So I'll turn on the device now. Like I say, this should run around 400 watts. So I'm expecting it to trip, but maybe it lasts for 30 seconds or something. We'll see how it goes, yeah? So it did first initially kick on. I can see it jumping up to 183, 200, 226, 300, 328, 393, 433. So just as it started putting out heat, it tripped. Then went into, you know, overcurrent protection and that kind of stuff. So I was kind of expecting that as well. This is right on the threshold of what this would be able to handle. I wouldn't expect that it would be able to run a little space heater like this. And really, to stop and talk about it for a second, there's only at best 288 watts in this battery stack. So even if you were to run something like a space heater, you're not even going to run it for an hour. You'd be lucky, even if this ran, you'd be lucky to have it run for, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes before you just drain the battery entirely. So you now to give you an idea, these AC plugs aren't for running, you know, producing heat and cooking food and that kind of stuff. These little tiny units just aren't capable of doing that kind of stuff. But what I have here now, I'll just turn the AC back on again. Like I say, when it trips, it automatically turns it off for circuit protection and that, which is good. You want that kind of stuff, right? You don't want to have things accidentally get fried. So my AC is back on and I've just got, let me make sure I'm catching this on camera, okay? I've just got a lamp, yeah? Just pulled it out of my bedroom. But I'm just gonna take this lamp and plug it in. Now that'll all depend on what the bulb is you're using and that kind of stuff. 
but as you can see I'm able to run the lamp without issue you know so if you wanted to have you know lighting going and that kind of stuff but I'm not seeing any power draw down here I'm not seeing any watts out it's showing zero and I don't suspect that that's the case this isn't running off zero energy if you will so I don't know about the accuracy when it comes to you know how accurate this little gauge is I go more by what the battery percentage is at over what the watts being drawn is you know that's that's my take on this but you know when it comes to if you were out in the field or off grid and that kind of stuff potentially you could run uh, you know a lighting system as you would and you can control that you know in a living room and that kind of thing but you can control that all off your cell phone as well and i'll just plug in a little shaver that i have here and i'll just plug that in and i'm able to run a shaver and run lights and stuff you know so if i'm out in the field being able to give myself a shave once every couple of days and that kind of stuff it's all good in my world right of, i don't mind that of and here i'll just plug that back in sorry there's a built-in battery in this that holds about one minute of charge because this thing's like five years old so but uh i'm only pulling about six seven watts off of this but the light isn't even registering the light isn't even registering that i'm pulling power now it could be that i've just got a really efficient light bulb in there that's only using one or two watts i don't know i tend to run very efficient lighting and that kind of stuff in my home generally speaking but i'm seeing it showing out zero watts output here when i know this is probably realistically running anywhere from three to five watts but to give you an idea for the ac like i say you could end up running you know this kind of level of power production and like i say if i wanted to turn around and have the 300 watts is shared across the two of these as a side note now if i wanted to turn around and have an additional ac output be easy enough to plug in one of those little portable inverters i just picked this up i live in canada so i picked this up a canadian tire but it'd be easy enough to just plug that in i'll kick on my dc i'll unplug it from here and plug it in here and you can see i'm running off yeah I'm starting to see it off the DC now. It says I'm running one watt, two watts. So I've just got a really, really efficient light bulb that's sitting in there. But you can see if I wanted to run separate AC systems, it's easy enough to adapt the cigarette lighter to run small loads as well, right? But that's what I would expect out of a generator like this. Like I say, when you're only when you're only running a 288 watt battery, you know, if you're running something that's, you know, it, it's using like 200 watts of power per hour it's going to chew through this battery in a little you know a little over an hour you know in best case scenario um i'm of the belief that this battery is only holding about 200 225 watts from dead to full as it as i received it you know so it's one of those things where i don't really want to run larger heavier devices you know even if this shaver was using say you know 30 watts roughly i'd be able to run that for 10 hours off a of charge you know to give you an idea of context if i'm running a television and that television is running 100 watts i'm only going to be at best able to run that tv for two or three hours you know i mean this is a small light portable device it's not really you know i can easily lift that in one hand you know it's not really meant to be driving living rooms and cooking food and that kind of stuff it's not really the purpose of this generator you know it's more small light compact use it out in the field like i say i can run some lights i can charge my devices i can get a shave going when i'm out there you know i i expected to use it at this level it's a little unfortunate that i wasn't able to get the 12 volt uh um up with a high enough amperage i mean ideally i'd like to see it where um this was running um even 12 amps with uh over current protection closer to 15 and that would make this far more practical because i know that you know even if i was using 150 watts if this is you know i'm just going to ballpark things to make the math simple you know if 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 i'm pulling 150 watts an hour to cook food and this is a 300 watt battery i mean i'm going to get two hours worth of cook time out of that you know um i can easily cook off in in that little cooking pot i have i can easily cook off like a can of soup or something in about a half hour's time i've shown that in previous videos so you know it's really unfortunate that the cigarette lighter adapter didn't have the amper 
amperage capacity that I needed to cook food out in the fields because I could have still used this to do kind of ultra efficient cooking and you know uh, I could have used that little immersion heater to make myself a coffee in the morning that kind of stuff so I'm not able to do that with this level of generator you know it's it's just not an option for me but I'll shift now and I'll start talking about the solar panel and well then we'll show some scenes of it being used out in the sunshine and that kind of stuff and show you the power performance of that yeah all right fellow youtubers so I've taken the all powers s300 here and its solar panels out into the field just so I can get some sunlight on these and show you the performance secondarily I also brought along an additional folding solar panel I have here just to hook this into the USB C to show you what kind of power input that this would have so I'll just shift camera angles and stuff and I'll start to plug in the different solar panels and their different options and show you the kind of power production that we're gonna input into this unit yeah so first order business, I'll just turn around and give myself a little bit of room to work with here. And I'm just going to open up and set up this solar panel. So it's got this Velcro strap on the side, kind of easily allows you to open it up. And as you can see, it's got a full 100 watt solar panel that exists here. And then on the back of the unit, there's folding legs that exist that I can pull out and uh, set to the angle of the sun and that way I can get better performance. So I'll just turn around and shift camera angles again here. Like I say, you can see it's easy enough to kind of set those legs. That way it sits on a good angle, yeah, to the sun. And then this part would just, you know, sit out of the way so it's not facing the solar panel and inhibiting any type of uh, power production. But uh, I just want to kind of show you the backside of this angle, if you will. So I'm just going to take this unit and shift it. And well, there's one more thing I should show you before we even get there. I'll show you the different types of inputs that we have with this unit now. So I've got a few different options. I've kind of just bagged them all up and that way it's easier to handle. And by default, I had my Anderson connections hooked up, but there's a few different ways that you can plug in these solar panels to this power unit. So this is MC4, so it's standard kind of solar technology, if you will. And then it's got an Anderson plug where I can go MC4 out to the Anderson. And then I'll show you some of the other options that they have. I was just using the Anderson, but you know, such is life, right? So I've also got um, MC4 going out to a barrel connection and allows me to you know, plug into barrel devices. I haven't even used this yet, but uh, well, this will be part of the review, right? So needless to say, I go out to a little barrel connector and that's uh, MC4 connections there. And then I've got some different adapters that they supply that allows me to um, shift off if I'm wanting to hook into other solar generators that have varying different adapters I can plug into those yeah so but it's kind of good that they've supplied these alternative ways most of my equipment that I use is MC4 generally speaking but it's nice to have an Anderson adapter just as part of my kit and I'm glad they added it as kind of an additional freebie I like that aspect of things but uh, I'll just plug the Anderson back in firstly like I say I'll turn around and just kind of set up this solar panel I'll shift camera angles I'll set up this solar panel and then I'll just show how simple it is to plug it into the generator and that kind of stuff yeah so now as you can see two second job set up the solar panel and then I've got the Anderson adapter is just coming off the back here that I can turn around and just plug into the device and I'll shift camera angles and I'll show you that this is really just elementary process it's easy enough to turn around and plug this in but you know uh, when it comes to hooking all this stuff up generally speaking it's as simple as that so I'll do a close-up of that and then I'll show you the kind of power production that we're doing here when it comes to how much power these solar panels are actually sticking into the battery yeah so let me shift camera angles and I'll show you that part as well Okay, so I just shifted my camera angles and I'll just show you here. I'll just unplug this now. Like I say, I've got uh, a red and a black on the Anderson. And if you see the inputs on the side of the generator unit, you just red to red, black to black, right? You turn around and just plug that in, make sure it's all the way in. It's got nice little weatherproofing on there, so it's a little weather resistant. And it's just as simple as that. You know, it's plugged in and going. I'll show the other adapter as well. So I'll just grab that and um, show hooking that up as well, yeah? So I'll just unplug the Anderson again. And it's really simple. When it comes to these MC4 adapters, there's little kind of clip points where you just got to pinch it in and you can pull them off. They just lock to each other. It's a way to kind of keep them strapped to each other. So I'll just pop off the Anderson one for now. Just set that to the side. 
And like I say, when it comes to the barrel connector now, it's just a simple. The Anderson connectors have a male and a female connection. So you'll see the male goes into the female. You know, the same with the other one. You know, male goes into the female. I'm hooked up and it's just that elementary. Now when it comes to the input here, I just plug into the barrel connector that's on here. And I'm hooked up. And I'll just confirm. Yeah, I'm taking a charge in now. So you can use either option. You know, like I say, I just like having this additional piece. If a wire breaks or something, at least I've got options where I can toggle between them. And when it comes to, you know, the barrel plugs and stuff, there's some solar generators that have different adapters on the side. So it's handy in that regard of these solar panels can connect into multiple different um, uh, solar generators, not necessarily just all powers, which is kind of nice in that regard. Now, the one thing I wish they had on these 100 watt solar panels was a couple USB outs sitting right on the unit. I think they have that on their 200 watt versions but on this 100 watt version that i have here they don't but uh, and you know those are minor details the solar generator itself has that right so needless to say i'll uh shift camera angles and show you how many watts i'm putting in the best i've seen to date so far was 69 watts you know but uh, uh i'll wait for a cloud to pass i'll shift the camera angles and i'll show you the maximum generation that i'm seeing today you know and right now we're in january and i live in canada so i'm not going to have ideal conditions normally one way or the other but uh like i say i'll show you just an example of how much energy this panel is actually putting into the unit yeah okay so the sun's come out a half decent amount and hopefully I'll catch this on the camera okay but I can see I'm getting 76 77 watts 78 79 like I say the Sun's just a nice clear day hopefully the camera's picking that up okay but uh, bouncing anywhere from 60 to almost 80 so when it comes to a hundred watt solar panel it's really good in that regard of like I say when a cloud passes a bit it'll drop down but all in all the performance that this is getting is pretty impressive and I'm looking at this number right here so hopefully uh let's see if I can kind of darken that over if that helps at all I know the cameras get tricky when it comes to that stuff but as you can see I'm producing 62 watts right now so it's a decent amount it's the equivalent of what I would be charging this off of the wall at home you know so it's good in that regard of I know that I can kind of do full speed charging um, when I'm out in the field just using the solar panel and that's really good in that regard of you know anywhere from say four or five six hours depending on the intensity and that kind of the sun and all that kind of stuff you know this thing can go from dead to full so it's good in that regard of in a half decent day's sun where it's out for a good four or five hours i'm gonna have battery charged so when i'm out in the field that's kind of invaluable from my perspective so there was one other thing i like to say i wanted to kind of test when i was out here because i haven't even tested it myself of i wanted to see if i could plug in my little folding unit and run off the usb-c and come in there's a USB-C on the side right here and that's power input and output and I want to see if my little folding panel that's way smaller than the one that I have you know sitting off camera here that's plugged in I want to see if that can supply a charge to this device as well and then I'll test them both at the same time and see if I can feed solar in off of both of these simultaneously to kind of amp up the speed of the charge time so like I say this is all just part of the review right so let me shift camera angles and set that gear up and uh we'll see how it goes Okay, so I'll just sh shift the solar generator unit over. And just kind of move the bits over a bit. And now, if you watch previous videos of mine, you've seen this. It's just a little 30 watt folding solar panel I have. Now, to output to a single USB, it's got a maximum of three amps that it can output. And I've used this out in the field a lot, so I know this is kind of field tested in that regard. And uh, I've, like I said, I've showed this in previous videos, so it'll be familiar terrain to other people that have watched historically. But uh, let me just get my bits out of here. And uh, it's got a lag here, a lag here, just the same as the 100 watt. And I'm just going to turn around and set this up here now. And like I say, it's all USB based on the back of this. Now I've, I've got three USB outs. So I'm just going to, and they're all supply about three amps of maximum power. And like I say, this unit at peak 
Um, realistically, it says it's 30, but I find it produces close to 20 at peak. You know, that's just the nature of panels, generally speaking. But uh, I'm going to turn around and just bring this over now and plug this in over into the USB-C here. I'll shift camera angles. I'm just going to plug this into the USB-C and see if we can get power flowing directly from here, charging up this unit, yeah? So like I say, I'm plugged into the back of this little folding solar panel and I'm simply just going to take my USB-C and plug it into the USB-C on the side of the unit and see if that starts taking a charge. So I'll shift my camera angles down and I'll show you the exact amount of watts going in off of this little panel, yeah? Okay, so the little solding, little solar folding panel here. Now, that's getting good sun at this point in time, but what I'm seeing, let's see if I can bring the camera in closer. What I'm seeing now is that I'm not really taking a decent charge here. I'm only getting two watts in coming off of that panel through that USB-C. So I'm a little disappointed in that because I know that that panel produces more than that. I've, I've used that in lots of different examples. So I don't know if there's some internal throttling or something. And uh, I'll test that further when I do the indoor um, power where I'll plug into the wall and see if I can come in through this USB-C and get higher watts coming in. But two watts is definitely on the low side in order to charge this it would take a hundred hours you're working off that panel so that's unfortunate if i can't use my little tiny one to to kind of help add to this i was expecting that i would be able to get up to about 15 watts going in 14 15 watts at maximum you know ideally i thought i'd be getting closer to about 10 watts going in so to see it's only coming in at two is a little unfortunate in that regard but now i'm just going to grab my Anderson connector connection and see if I can plug those in at both at the same time and see if that um, will shut anything down or make anything you know limited or any of that business and uh, I can see I'm taking increased power now coming off of the larger panel it's jumping up to 12 15 18 so normally this little meter takes a second. It seems to have a little bit of a delay there and hopefully the camera is picking this up. I know it's a little bit difficult to make out on the camera, but we're up to 50 watts at this point in time, 55. We're at 61. And so, and that's primarily off that 100 watt panel. And like I say, if I unplug this little one, I don't even see a drop in difference, a little bit of a drop. I lost that two watts that was going in. So that tells me that, yeah, I could be charging off of that small folding one plugged in as well, but the amount of power it's giving me is so minimal, it just doesn't really matter. Then when it comes to the watts now, I'm sitting at 73, 74. So, you know, this is taking, like I say, a good amount of power off these panels. I'm actually impressed with the solar panel itself, you know, to see that I'm pulling 74, 75 watts, to see that I'm pulling that on a January day in Canada off these panels. I'm surprised, actually. I didn't think I'd see that level of performance. I thought it would be closer to seeing about 60 watts max. So I'm pleasantly pleased in that regard and knowing that this thing's charging faster than it would be off the wall. So that makes me happy in that regard. But, uh, I'll shift camera angles and kind of wrap up this part of the video, yeah? So like I say, I thought I'd just kind of shift camera angles one more time, show you the solar panel. Uh, I'm really pleased with the solar panel. It's definitely been performing well. Uh, and like I say, real simple setup. I like how it's the MC4 out, and then they give you options to go into their generator or off to other gear. I have other equipment so that I could use that's all MC4 compatible. So it's nice to have both options. You know, the one thing that uh, I wish they had with a solar generator was um, that came kind of part of the package was um, a way to plug it into my cigarette lighter when I'm in the truck to give it a charge but what I've seen out of all the charging so far is the solar panels you know plugging in this 100 watt solar panel into the solar generator is the fastest way to charge this device it doesn't charge quite as quickly when I'm at home and it's plugged into the wall that's just facts on the ground so what I find is that this will be better for using out in the field which is exactly what I plan on using it for all right fellow youtubers well there you have it my honest review of the All Powers S300 and 100 watt solar panel combo. I really liked the solar panels. I thought they had good outstanding performance really. Of uh, I managed to even get a second one of these that I picked up online because I liked the performance of the panels and I liked how the, the cost point and everything else. Like I say in Canada, 
these are only $200 units. For a 100 watt uh, folding solar panel, that's a good deal. And I like the quality of them. You know, the, the legs are good, they're rigid and all that kind of stuff. The power performance was good. It was easy to set up. It was simple. The only thing I wish that they had built into the 100 watt solar panels was some USB outs on the actual wiring that's coming off the panel. You know, some of them have them. Typically you see those in kind of higher end and um, higher wattage panels. Um, you don't normally see too many of those at the 100 watt range, but I'd like to see that kind of added in. But either way, top performer. Like I said, I picked up a second one of these myself and I've got the connections that I can um, MC4 both the panels together and boost it up to a 200 watt you know, um, output, if you will. So realistically, the panels are producing about 75, a ballpark about 75 each. So I can get up to about 150 watts so I'll use the all powers panels probably in future videos to show cooking food directly off panels without having any batteries involved at all and when it comes to the s300 solar generator um, like I say I, again I'm up in Canada and I think they had this listed don't quote me on this but I think they had this listed for about $170 or so um, Canadian so you know it's really really cheap even to pay the taxes and shipping and everything else the solar generator is outstanding at its price point it's really cheap in that regards for what you're getting you know like I say it's not the ideal solar generator when it comes to if you wanted to run a house and all that kind of stuff but if you're looking for some emergency lighting I think the lighting that's built into these is fantastic it's really high quality the light is bright and it fills a room you know and it's built right into the generator so you know you have lighting everywhere you take the generator um, primarily I'll be using it for its USB side of life and uh, being able to kind of power my GoPros and that kind of stuff you know I might use it to run my shavers and those types of things um, there is other um, devices that I'll potentially look at um, having that I don't have through time of kind of low energy um, kettles and those types of things and I might even look at moving up to the next step up in the all powers solar generator lineup you know uh, as it goes for the build quality and everything else I mean the quality itself of these units are, are nice you know despite the shortcomings that I've seen this is kind of their cheaper end bottom of the barrel for the for the masses at the price point they're at you know you can go pick one of these up i'm not 100 but i do believe they're starting to sell these in walmart down in the states and stuff now and uh you know it's one of those things if you're wanting to just kind of get into solar you want to have a little bit of emergency power to be able to you know power usb devices and run lights and stuff in your house if there's an emergency and the power is out and that kind of stuff this can be a viable option you know, when it comes to cooking food and stepping it up to that level and, you know, heating an environment and that kind of stuff. Normally, when it comes to heating environments, solar isn't ideal for doing that, solar electric at least anyways, isn't ideal for doing that generally speaking. But, uh, you know, you'd want to move up to a stronger solar generator to be able to cook foods and those types of things. But... Um, like I say, any devices that, you know, are, are kind of low powered AC devices or low powered, um, you know, cigarette lighter adapters and that kind of stuff, be able to run all of that stuff, you know, of you might want to look at just moving up to the all powers the next level up to be able to, if you wanted to cook food out in the field and run, you know, off the cigarette lighter or be able to, you know, boil water and cook food and that kind of stuff. But all in all, you know, this product to me is top shelf for this whole complete set to be under $500 and give me the ability to go off grid and produce, you know, power for long term. You know, I can get five years use out of this and have all of this stuff together. It weighs less than 20 pounds. I mean, this stuff is super light. It's compact. I can throw it in a vehicle and take it and go, you know, like I say, it's not the top of the line nor are they selling it as that right but uh if you are looking for you know a fairly good quality product then that like i say for me the solar panels were fantastic i really like them there's some improvements i'm going to be honest there's some improvements i'd like to see all powers do on these little solar you know generator units but i do understand that there's only one solar generator they sell that's even a smaller unit than this then everything else starts to move up into realms where you should be able to cook food and those types of things you know next level power or I consider that to be but when it comes to using this out in the field this will be good to use it'll make you know off-grid you know bush crafting and all that kind of stuff it'll make it more comfortable and it'll make it easier on my power demand so I'm happy that they sent it out to me and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to do this review video but if you enjoy this type of content you know please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching yeah cheers